morning, fellow early risers of Landis Homes. I am Edgar Stace, a relative newbie residing happily at Harvest View 024, having moved here from Akron, where I resided for 66 years, 57 of which were with my wife Gladys, who died in 2010. Most of my life has been spent working in and with MCC in six different capacities, administrative capacities, usually Akron-based. I am a collector. In German, ich bin ein Sammler. I gather sayings and quotations that otherwise they would just float through the air and be gone by evening, you won't remember them. So I have a scissor near my, where I read my paper, and when I see something that I think deserves another hearing, I, I cut it. And uh, so it's not unusual for me to, uh, to have uh, one or two a week. I have sometimes people send me things that they think are deserving, and sometimes they are, and I use them. So today, I, when I was asked to do this devotional, I, I questioned whether perhaps my gleanings might be appropriate. And I, I trust that they are. Um, I, I trust that they are in, this, in, the, in keeping with the series that uh, you're accustomed to here. Uh, for this particular occasion, I just uh, grabbed my file that was uh, uh, maybe almost uh, an inch thick of, collect, of, of quotes that I, that I gathered in the past years. For many years, I, I put them on a, on a photocopy and, and reproduced them and gave them to my friends. Now, for a number of years, I've just been collecting. I haven't been putting out any issues of gleanings, but I'm about pre preparing to do one soon. So um, I just grabbed into that file and arbitrarily pulled out about 50. And then I read them for appropriateness here at Landis Homes and culled them back to 26. And then uh, th I knew that would be still too many and I cut it back some more. So we'll see how far we get. I have enough to keep you here till noon, but I won't. And you won't, keep, won't stay with me either. We have a, a limited time, so we'll just start at the top, and uh, they don't follow any particular theme. These are just uh, something to inspire and amuse and provoke uh, the, 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 the listener. So with that said, I will begin with my first one. Some of you will recognize this one. You may recognize a number of my quotations. That's good. They, they've been around. They've, they've been judged worthy of another hearing. So this one was made famous by Louis Armstrong, no less. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think of myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white the bright blessed days, the day and sacred night. And I think to myself, this really is a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry, I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And think to myself, this is a wonderful world. Yes, I think this is a wonderful world. Now, some of these are very short. In fact, I like short quotes. Prayer opens the heart to God, and it is the means by which the soul, though empty, is filled with God. Now, if you need it, it's so short, I'll repeat it. Prayer opens the heart to God, and it is the means by which the soul, though empty, is filled with God.
sometimes I know where, I, I try to retain who, where the quote comes from, but sometimes I have failed to do that, and that is the case here with this little reading. It may be, it may come from Richard Rohr, because I am a faithful reader of his. Scripture begins with a whole world, uh, world of chaos. Then God begins to find the possibilities of design in this formless void, separating light from darkness, water from land. God consecrates the chaos, gives it form. It is presented to us as an act of creativity and choice. God works in the chaotic void until there is order and light and it is good. The Genesis story reminds us that the void is not as empty as we think. Chaos is never chaos as we fear. Now here I have a, a whole series of quotes, some from Jimmy Carter, who um, I had the privilege of working with in Habitat for Humanity, and, um, but I'm not quoting Jimmy today. I'm quoting the first one from Sinclair Lewis. Whatever poets and sages may say of it, old age is still old age. This one is from an unknown writer. If I had known I would live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. This one, likewise, is, is anonymous, but it's, it's good. You'll like it. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Whenever, wherever I am, God is, and all is well. And this I do not need to fear. God loves me and God loves you. Here's one I'm pretty sure at least half of you will like. It's very short. Women, do seek to, women who seek to be equal to men lack ambition. I'll repeat it. Women who seek to be uh, equal to men, not very ambitious. When you come to the edge of the light you have known, this comes from uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. When you come to the edge of the light you have known and are about to step out into the darkness, faith is knowing one of two things will happen. There will either be something to stand on or you will be taught to fly. Here's another very short one, but with a real punch. The purpose of life, this is from Ralph Waldo Emerson. The purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful and honorable, to be compassionate, to have and make some difference that you have lived and lived well. And isn't that the goal? for all of us, to have lived and to have lived well. I need to pray into my, I don't need to pray God into my life. God is already there. I need to pray myself into an awareness of God. I'm going to repeat that one for you. That incidentally, this is, I think, the only one that is a quote from me. This, this one, I, I would claim credit for this one. I said it in 2016. I don't need to pray God into my life. God is already there. I need to pray myself into an awareness of God. Now, here's one that I like so much because it came from last, last Friday's paper. You know, sometimes, oh, then sometimes we have uh, um, 
uh, longer quotes and shorter quotes, and I'll try to shorten this one. When, when we see the world as a fundamentally good and beautiful garden that needs tending, we can take measures so that we are not overwhelmed by global problems. We can volunteer for a local cause. We can uh, give more to charity. We can take the time to smile and those around us and fulfill our part in making the planet a better place. And with that, I will, come to, I will go to the end of my series. Um, just a few short ones here. You have too much room in the, well, you know you're old when you have too much room in the house and not enough room in the medicine cabinet. When you sink your teeth into a steak and they stay there. Here's one we could all post on our bulletin boards. A wise old owl sat on an oak. The more he heard, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why aren't we like that wise old bird? Well, okay. Now this is this one you will enjoy, and I enjoy giving it to you. It's called, you may have heard it. I don't know where I got it, uh, but it's worth, worth hearing. I've never made a fortune, and it's probably too late now. But I don't worry about that much. I'm happy anyhow. And as I go along life's way, I'm reaping better than I sowed. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. Haven't had a lot of riches, sometimes the going's tough, but I've got loved ones around me, and that makes me rich enough. I thank God for blessings and the mercies he bestowed. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. Oh, remember the times when things went wrong? My faith was somewhat thin, but all at once the dark clouds broke and the sun peeped through again. So, Lord, help me not to gripe about the, the tough rows that I have hoed, because I'm drinking from the saucer, because my cup has overflowed. If God gives me strength and courage when, he, when the way grows steep and rough, I'll not ask for other blessings. I'm already blessed enough. And may I never be too busy to help others bear their loads. Then I'll be drinking from my saucer because my cup is overflowed. And with that, I bid you God's blessing to watch over you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you this day. May God give you grace never to sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth, too small for anything but love. So may God take our, your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. Through the power of God who created us, who is reminding us, and whose holy presence refuses to leave us unchanged. It was prayed by William Sloan Coffin.